When a couple is pregnant, attending routine ultrasounds can be such a happy and exciting time. The sonogram can reveal the possible sex of the baby, or maybe they can watch the tiny heartbeat of the life that they've created. But it can also diagnose a terminal illness and send the couple and their family into a situation they never imagined. In an event that could otherwise be crushing, today we discuss Gabriel's Courage, the perinatal comfort support program that's available to expecting mothers who are called to never abandon the ill, but to support precious life from conception until natural death. On today's episode of CHS Presents, Lifestyles at the Heart of Health. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Jane Hansen. The Gabriel's Courage program at Catholic Health Services helps women during a high-risk pregnancy where the fetus has been diagnosed with a life-limiting disease. Joining me today is Mary Beth McKeever, the Assistant Director of Bereavement from Good Shepherd Hospice, to talk about the team of support staff and everything else that's involved with this whole program of Gabriel's Courage. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So, what is this? What is Gabriel's okay. Courage? Um, fundamentally, Gabriel's Courage is a very special program that is offered by Catholic Health Services and administered by very specially trained staff of Good Shepherd Hospice. Uh, Gabriel's Courage is really a family-focused prenatal program that is specifically designed for families who receive a uh, poor prenatal diagnosis during the pregnancy, a life-limiting diagnosis during that pregnancy, and make the decision to continue the pregnancy. What does life-limiting diagnosis mean? Life-limiting diagnosis means that um, there is a poor prognosis, that, that a death is expected at some point. Before birth or right after birth, or in a, I mean, are the what are the chances of these these babies actually living? Well, I, I think it's very specific to um, the illnesses that they're diagnosed with. Um, we have had um, babies in all those scenarios. We've had babies that uh, have died prior to birth. We have had babies die um, shortly after birth, um, and also sometimes babies do survive for a little bit longer period of time and are actually able to go home for very brief periods of time. So um, you just, you saw the need for this yes, and created this program. It's it's not that old at this point um, and, and created this whole team. Tell me about the team members. Okay, we really have a um, very dynamic interdisciplinary team. Um, we work on a model of compassion and support. Uh, the team members uh, do include physicians, clinical social workers. Uh, we have bereavement specialists, child life specialists, chaplains, as well as volunteers. And you get the whole family involved, too. Absolutely. As I said, it really is very much a family-focused program. And who's eligible to, to come and, and have these services? Do you have to be a Catholic or Christian? Or? Uh, no, not at all. Really, um, the main eligibility is any woman in um, Nassau or Suffolk County who has received a life-limiting diagnosis. Um, talk about, in, in, does it cost money? Is there a fee? No, there is no charge for any of the services offered by Gabriel's Courage. Where'd the name come from? Um, that, that's a good question. We, we are uh, actually put a lot of thought into that. Um, it was very important to us that the name really uh, represented the passion that we feel um, for our mothers and our unborn babies and our, certainly our families. And I think most of us know that it was the Archangel Gabriel who came to Mary to announce the impending birth of Jesus. And we really felt uh, that that was a beautiful representation of mother and unborn child. When you created this program, did you feel that women who made this decision to continue these pregnancies because of this horrible diagnosis, that they had nowhere to turn? Uh, yes, most of them did not. Um, 
our mothers uh, have told us that um, they did not feel supported, sometimes by other family members, uh, sometimes by the medical community. Um, they often got the message to abort and not go through with the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to take a look at, at one woman now. Um, her name is Diana Pizarro. She's a mother who has experienced Gabriel's courage firsthand. Let's hear how it helped her to make the most of the time she had with her child and helped in her journey towards healing and hope. We were very happy because we were going to have an, a baby. My children were very, very happy, and my husband and myself. The doctor right away told me there, is, there are many things that are not right and the baby may have very, very difficult uh, situation in terms of health. So the first, the first thing that he suggested was to, to terminate with his life right away, even though I didn't know what was going on. So I told him straight and said, so you are suggesting me abortion? And he said, well, it's one of the things that you may do because there is not expectancy of life. He said, okay, thank you so much, and I stood up and I left the office. I was so upset, and that is devastating news for a parent. And I was only three months pregnant, and I knew that was not a choice for us, being a Catholic family. So then I went to this different doctor, and she told me, listen, she explained to me what was going on with my baby. My baby has trisomy 13. She explained that was going to be difficult, and he also had a problem with his heart. I was going to be lucky to meet the baby and uh, he may die. He has 50% the possibilities to live, to, in other words, to get to the end of the pregnancy, because most of these babies die in the process. When I got uh, the news, I was working here, as I mentioned, in an office in faith formation in the uh, diocese of Ragville Center, and then I was in touch, because it's part of our office, Respect Light Office director, and she told me about Gabriel's Courage program, and if sh I was interested to be part of this program, and I say yes. I got in touch with the program. They called me and they set up an appointment and they visited me. And even before meeting the people in this program, over the phones, it's, it's going to be as much as you want, as much as you allow us to, to come. If you want me to come to your office, I come to your office. If you want me to come to your house, I come to your house in a way to make me feel comfortable. And they provide the counseling for my children. And they also put me in touch with a deacon to work this spiritual part. The program is in touch with all the resources that you may need. I cannot imagine going through this process without their help, especially Mary Beth, because she knew who to call, who to talk to. She became an advocate in different instances with the doctors with a funeral home, with what, name it. She knew who to call, and that was fantastic. She, she took um, a step forward, and she became like my sister. She was doing as if she, I was part of her family, and it was going, it was happening in her family. If somebody else was in my position, I definitely suggest them to find this program because it's going to help them ahead of time to plan. The very important part was the birth plan because in the moment of the event, knowing ahead of time that what could happen, the expectancy of life was not uh, going to be a long period of time, so we knew that he could die at any moment. When we talked to the cardiologist, he says he may be for minutes, hours, weeks, but we cannot promise. So we prepare, so we were prepared. And it was excellent to work out this birth plan because we could decide ahead of time, do you want this, do you want that, do you want oxygen, no oxygen, is that baby going to be in tube, things like that. So it was great to discuss that ahead of time. It's painful, but I think that prepares the family to go through this process and through the program, I could prepare the birth plan. And not just the birth plan, but also the afterwards and the things that you would never expect to talk to your husband and your, your family, especially your husband, because 
you're not going to prepare probably a baby shower, but a funeral. And it's something that, let's be honest, and we need to be prepared. So it's better to know ahead of time that to be in that moment that is so sad. And because in that moment, the only thing that you're going to treasure is the minutes that you spend with your baby. His life was precious. His life, we were asking for a miracle. And even though we know, we knew that all that situation that he was going through because of his health condition, the only thing that I was praying every little day that I had Pablo in my womb was to meet him. It's the only thing that I ask God every day in prayer. I just want to meet him. I just want to see his eyes. I just want to hold my baby alive in my arms so he could be baptized. And we just treasured that moment that so much. And uh, we were lucky enough to that the baby was born alive. And uh, Good Samaritan Hospital helped us through a lot. They, they have wonderful nurses and they knew they had dealt with these situations in some occasions and they treated us very, very gentle, gently and nice. And they were, you know, eager to help us in whatever means they could. And uh, I am happy to say that, yes, God answered our prayers in letting us know Pablo when, that he was born alive and that we could baptize him. And as a Catholic family, that is very, very important to us. Whoa, you were in the delivery room, is that true, Maribeth? I was outside of the delivery room, yes. And I had the honor and privilege of being there with the family. You say honor. I mean, it's, it's so heartbreaking to me. I, how do you do it? Well, um, it's really not me. It w was this wonderful, very exceptional family who really embraced um, the, um, the birth and the life of their son and really wanted to celebrate it. And that's part of the goal that we have is to help families welcome and honor their baby. And when you talk about the goals of the program and, and I mean, it's, it's, there's the spiritual component, there's yes. the physical component. There, there are many components. Um, in regards to our overall goals, in light of our families who receive this life-limiting diagnosis of their, their baby prior to birth, um, really it's our job to help families make meaningful decisions um, specific to them regarding the labor, the birth, uh, and also the postpartum care of mom, baby, and the entire family. Um, and that also includes our team assisting and supporting the family, saying goodbye to the baby whenever that occurs. How did Diana do after the birth and the death and, and all of that of the baby? I mean... Well, um, Diana is a grieving mom, and they're a grieving family. Um, you know, her, her, her baby was real, and, and that's, you know, fundamental to this to this program, the validation that yes, your your child was here, was real, there was a life. Um, she's done well. Um, her the whole family is coping very well with their loss and their grief, and they've been able to outreach to other families as well. Oh, that's great. Right. That's that's a great part of it. That's right. a wonderful component to hear because to have somebody help you walk that walk has got to be really amazingly helpful and, yes. and con consoling. Thank you, Mary Beth, so much for being with us. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Um, we're going to take a break, but stay with us. We'll be right back with more CHS Presents Lifestyles at the Heart of Health. Welcome back to CHS Presents Lifestyles at the Heart of Health. The loss of a baby, whether in utero or soon after birth, is the most heart-wrenching experience a parent can encounter. During this time, nothing is more important than providing compassion and understanding. Here with me now is Michelle Graff, a licensed clinical social worker and bereavement specialist from Good Shepherd Hospice. And of course, we're talking about Gabriel's courage. You really get down to the logistics. You really do what you call a birth plan for, for 
these parents. Uh, tell me about that. The birth plan really addresses three different parts um, of the pregnancy. Um, so we're looking at prenatal care, um, postnatal and antepartum care, and that includes the birth, and then um, funeral arrangements. So it's, I mean, you do the whole, the, the whole nine yards is mm -hmm. for for what's going on with with this baby mm -hmm. that's had a life limiting diagnosis. We want the family and and staff that are working with the family to be very prepared for any situation that might happen um, in the delivery room and beyond. So how do you specifically prepare for that though? I mean, what what does this birth plan look like? Um, well, we it's a working document, so it can be changed at any time. Um, but we work very closely with the family to decide what they want, um, uh, whether it be pictures before and after the birth. Um, any plans for comfort care, who they want to be in the room with them, um, and funeral arrangements are really an important part in preparing for that, what the family wants for their last wishes for their baby. What we saw with Diana earlier, um, she actually had the baby baptized mm -hmm. in the delivery room. Mm -hmm. And is that the sort of thing that you guys... Yes. Um, we really want to make um, this a special experience for the parents. We want them to parent their baby for whatever time that their baby um, is alive for. And part of that is any religious or spiritual um, considerations that they might have. You have a lot of people that volunteer, to, too, that volunteer their services mm -hmm. in, in the midst of all of this, because mm -hmm. I'm sure for them it's mm -hmm. really... Giving Absolutely. of the moments. Like, tell me about the volunteers. Um, well, we have a specialized volunteer department that does um, work with the families um, if need be, um, specifically um, taking pictures and also 3D sonograms so that they can capture moments and have them forever. That sounds really pretty amazing. Now, what about if the baby actually lives for a period of time and can go home? Then, how do you extend? Is that, is that part of what you do? Absolutely. Um, part of our um, service is home care. Um, so we will um, get the baby onto our hospice program and provide comfort care um, for the baby and uh, psychosocial support for the family. A lot of these women, when they're given the diagnosis, this horrible, horrific diagnosis, are advised that they might want to consider abortion. Mm -hmm. um, and yet these women make a completely different choice. How then, is there, is there postpartum depression? Is there stuff that happens later on then after the baby's um, gone? We like to prepare for anything. Um, so our supports and services extend for 13 months and even beyond. Um, we provide individual support, family, and group support for the women and their families. Does it ever become so anguished for them when, they, when they're going through this, when they're in the middle of the pregnancy and they realize the choice they've made that they, I, I just, to me, it's hard to understand how, what they must go through mentally and spiritually. I mean, how do you help counsel them through that? Because it's got mm -hmm. there are going to be days when it's just really hard. Absolutely, and we notice that um, there's a time of crisis upon the uh, initial diagnosis, and then towards the middle of the pregnancy, they start to relax. They're becoming, um, you know, more accepting of the diagnosis. And as we get closer to delivery, is when um, the anxiety starts again because this. These may be the final moments that they get to spend with their baby. And are these deliveries, are, are they most mostly planned as C-sections or? We never know. We never know what's going to happen. Um, you know, the baby could come on time, early. Um, we really have no way of knowing. What's the most incredible thing a mother has said to you after having gone through this experience that either surprised you or made you really grateful to do this work? You know, I have to say, it, it probably isn't the words that they say, it's just their expressions and how they make that connection with their baby and being a part of that and seeing that. And Mary Beth told us earlier that sometimes even the families are not very supportive of a decision to go through with the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Is that also something you have to deal with? Mm -hmm, absolutely. And we work with um, the, the primary caregivers um, and, and close family members and whatever their wishes are, we really want to honor that. Um, they are the parents. And if everybody's not on board, we work with you know what we have. Mm -hmm. And also, again, with Diana, she had two children, older children, mm -hmm. and they were both in the delivery room and they went through this whole process. Um, that decision, whether to involve the kids or how much to involve mm -hmm. them, I mean, again, that's another big milestone of a decision to make. Absolutely, and we like to honor the family's wishes as much as medically possible. Um, you know, there may be, the doctor may say absolutely not because of something they don't know might happen at the birth, um, but we, you know, encourage that family time if that's what they want. So it's really logistically from the moment this woman comes to you, there are all kinds of steps along the way mm -hmm. that are intended to help make this process what? 
memorable in a good way. Um, you know, we really want this, this baby as part of a family, and we want to create those memories and walk along this journey with them. Um, you know, memory preservation is so important because they only have a little bit of time, and that really is our goal. Mm. Michelle, thank you so much for being with us. I really appreciate it. We're going to take another break, but don't go anywhere because there is more as CHS presents Lifestyles at the Heart of Health right after this. Welcome back to CHS Presents Lifestyles at the Heart of Health. Today we're discussing perinatal comfort support, specifically the Gabriel's Courage program offered through Catholic Health Services. And joining me now is Elizabeth Olson, a child life specialist from Good Shepherd Hospice, to talk about legacy making and then working with siblings um, involved in all of this. I'm going to call you Lizzie because everybody else does. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, so talk about your role as a child life specialist. So my role as a child life specialist in the Gabriel's Courage program is to help support the siblings and to provide education to the parents, to help the parents to understand some of the grief reactions that their children might be experiencing and help them to find the words to explain what's happening with the infant. So when a parent decides that they're going to have a, uh, let their, bring their children in on all of this, that's a, that's a big decision to make. Do the kids understand it? Certainly, we base all of our information that we're sharing with the kids based on their age and developmental stage. I find a lot of children do understand. Um, sometimes they're afraid to ask the questions of what's really going on with their baby. And deep down, I think sometimes kids can sense the stress in the family and that there's changes going on. So they'll often kind of be looking for a safe person to help them answer those questions. Mm -hmm. And so how often are you with them? Is it once a week, every couple of weeks? Uh... Yeah, you know, it could depend on each of the families that we're working with. Certainly, sometimes we are able to be with them weekly if that's what they choose. Other times, it's more on a monthly basis leading up to the delivery. Well, you brought some of the things that you use. Like, for example, you will take... We will take a baby doll, um, and this is a medical play kit. And mm -hmm. so we use those, especially with the younger children, to help them to understand the diagnosis of the baby, also to help um, assess any misconceptions that they might have. And it helps them to gain mastery and control over the situation by practicing with the play materials and providing care for the baby. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, these kids, they make a, the parents make a choice whether or not they're going to come into the delivery room do you help assess whether the kid can handle that or not? Yes, that's one of the functions of the child life specialist is to assess if the child is ready. We do a lot of preparation um, and also just really telling the parents at the end of the day they know their child the best. So if they feel that their child could um, go into the delivery room, we certainly would support, support any decision that they're making. And we could also be present during the delivery to help the siblings if a family requested it. And another part of what you do, you talk about, you talk about legacy building, memory making. So talk to me about that. So it's a great way to include both the siblings and the family and the parents. Um, some examples that we brought here are footprints that we make with a casting and then the children can decorate them however they want. We also create memory boxes for the kids. They could put small mementos of the baby in there, maybe the baby's hat, a pacifier. And we find that these tangible memories really are a very meaningful project that the family can interact in. Sometimes we also do things like bring in a small cupcake so the kids can celebrate the birth of the baby and the baby will have their first cupcake um, and share it as a family. So we do a lot of different things. It just depends on what the families express that they are interested in. And now you, so you participate in this whole birth plan and, and give them, I mean, what do you find is the, is the one thing that might bring them the most comfort in all of this? I think the most important thing that brings them the comfort is honoring their baby, naming their baby, and respecting their choice to parent and allowing them to parent their child for however long that they're going to be here, whether it be a minute, an hour, or a few days, a few months. And that's the feedback that we get all the time from the families, that it was so deep and so meaningful. And to include the siblings in it because they're part of the family too and as much of the extended family as we can include too. So you've got this, all the stuff that takes place before the birth and then comes whatever happens in the delivery room and, and at that moment of, of death. What do the kids do afterwards? I mean, do you continue to, to work with them after? 
Yes, we continue to have a relationship with the children and we do provide um, bereavement support visits for the children. We also offer um, individual and group um, support sessions for them and um, you know they're followed very carefully. What do you think is the most important thing that you do for these kids? I think it's just giving them a sense of hope and letting them be a big brother, a big sister in, in light of everything that's going on in their family and hope, hopefully giving them sense of power and control over the situation. Well, Lizzie, thank you so much. I'm going to invite Mary Beth and Michelle to come back in and join us now as we, as we wrap up the show. I want to make sure that, that people know how they can reach out to you guys. Um, how do they find out about Gabriel's Courage and where can they go if they, if they want you? Yeah, certainly uh, physicians are free to make a referral at any time, uh, having uh, patients that meet the criteria. And patients can also refer themselves by contacting the Access Department of Good Shepherd Hospice. The number for that is area code 631-465-6363. They just call, we'll make sure they get connected to the team. What's the best message or the biggest message you want to give to people watching today? Um, I think that um, the fact that almost all families tell us in the end they were so glad that they were part of the program. And that it brought them comfort? Comfort. Um, memories. Um, I just had one mother recently uh, who told me that the pictures that were taken and some of the moldings that uh, were made of her child that sh she recognizes those are things that in 20 years from now she'll still be looking at. It's still a validation, a memory, and an honoring of her baby. Aww, thank you all so much for being with us. We really appreciate it and appreciate thank the work you. that you do at Gabriel's thank Courage. You. For more information on today's topic, you can call 1-855-CHS-4500 or visit chsli.org. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Jane Hansen, wishing you goodbye and good health.